So it turns out I share a birthday week with writer Toni Morrison, whose work focused on black lives, in particular the lives of black women, and her passing in August was a blow to all of American culture. But thank God we have her writing. With us tonight to read some of it is Lisa Gay Hamilton, popping in between her two performances of To Kill a Mockingbird just down the street on Broadway at the Schubert. Thanks so much for coming, Lisa Gay. Here's an excerpt from Toni Morrison's first novel, which turns 50 this year, The Bluest Eye. It had begun with Christmas and the gift of dolls. The big, the special, the loving gift was always a big, blue-eyed baby doll. From the clucking sounds of adults, I knew that the doll represented what they thought was my fondest wish. I was bemused with the thing itself and the way it looked. What was I supposed to do with it? Pretend I was its mother? I had no interest in babies or the concept of motherhood. I was interested only in humans my own age and size and could not generate any enthusiasm at the prospect of being a mother. Motherhood was old age and other remote possibilities. I learned quickly, however, what I was expected to do with the doll. Rock it. Fabricate stored situations around it, even sleep with it. Picture books were full of little girls sleeping with their dolls, raggedy and dolls usually, but they were out of the question. I was physically revolted by and secretly frightened of those round, moronic eyes, the pancake face and orange worm's hair. The other dolls, which were supposed to bring me great pleasure, succeeded in doing quite the opposite. When I took it to bed, its hard, unyielding limbs resisted my flesh. The tapered fingertips on those dimpled hands scratched. If in sleep I turned, the bone-cold head collided with my own. It was a most uncomfortable, patently aggressive sleeping companion. <laughs> to hold it, it was no more rewarding. The starched gauze or lace on the cotton dress irritated any embrace. I had only one desire, to dismember it. <laughs> to see what it was made of, to discover the dearness, to find the beauty, the desirability that escaped me, but apparently only me. Adults, older girls, shops, magazines, newspapers, window signs, all the world had agreed that a blue-eyed, yellow-haired, pink-skinned doll was what every girl child treasured. Here, they said, this is beautiful, and if you are on this day worthy, you may have it. I fingered the face, wondering at the single-stroke eyebrows, picked at the pearly teeth stuck like two piano keys between red bowline lips, traced the turned-up nose, poked the glassy blue eyeballs, twisted the yellow hair. I could not love it, but I could examine it to see what it was that all the world said was lovable. Break off the tiny fingers, bend the flat feet, loosen the hair, twist the head around, and the thing made one sound, a sound they said was sweet and plaintive cry, Mama but which sounded to me like a bleat of a dying lamb, or more precisely, our icebox door opening on rusty hinges in July. Remove the cold and stupid eyeball, it would bleat still, ah! Take off the head, shake out the sawdust, crack the back against the brass bed rail, it would still bleat. The gauze back would split, and I could see the disc with its six holes, the secret of the sound, a mere metal roundness. Grown people frowned and fussed. You do not know how to take care of nothing. I never had a baby doll in my whole life and used to cry my eyes out for them. Now you go one, now you got one, a beautiful one, and you tear it up. What's the matter with you? How strong was their outrage? Tears threatened to erase the aloofness of their authority. The emotion of years unfulfilled longing preened in their voices. I don't know why I destroyed those dolls but I do know that nobody ever asked me what I wanted for Christmas. Had any adult with the power to fulfill my desires taken me seriously and asked me what I wanted, they would have known that I did not want to have anything to own or to possess any object. I wanted rather to feel something on Christmas Day. The real question would have been, dear Claudia, what experience would you like on Christmas? Oh, I would have spoken up. 
I want to sit on the low stool in my big mama's kitchen with my lap full of lilacs and listen to Big Papa play his violin for me alone. The lowness of the stool made for my body, the security and warmth of Big Mama's kitchen, the smell of lilacs, the sound of the music, and since it would be good to have all of my senses engaged, the taste of a peach, perhaps, afterward. Lisa Gay Hamilton, the work of Toni Morrison.